Hello and welcome to another episode of Indie Pokemon Dex. Uh, it's been a little while. I, I've had some uh, inconsistencies with uh, getting videos out in the last two weeks. I think I've had like only two videos in the last two weeks, and part of that's because of uh, some, uh, some some vacation I took. But um, the other part is uh, I have not been able to come up with good decks, <laughs> and not that I haven't been able to come up with original decks, because I have you know the, I have some deck ideas that I've been playing around with a couple of them. But none of them have been winning consistently. So uh, I took a, uh, you know, I was, I was getting frustrated for a little while, and I, I took the advice from one of my, uh, from a commenter who said, uh, hey, why don't you try some expanded decks? And it just kind of stuck in my head. I read it a while back, and, you know, I said, why don't you try some discount um, or just expanded decks? And, uh, you know, I was, I was just so frustrated. I, I went back, and I tried some stuff out, and I actually have a couple of expanded decks that, uh, that I'm going to be making videos of, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, this is a nice budget one, uh, as you can see here. I don't have a lot of, uh, I, don't, I don't even have a Shaman or a Tapu Lele or anything. This should be very affordable, very cheap. And I have to say, I think of the three expanded decks, this might be the best one. I don't know. Uh, one of the other ones is pretty good too, and I've played that one for a while. I just kind of tweaked it, but this one's surprisingly good, and... Uh, the the focal point is uh, well. There's two focal points actually, depending on your opponent, depending how the game goes. So um, we're using Gorgeist here um, from X Y, and I love this card. I was so sad when this rotated out. <laughs> this is such a good card. It's so fun to play with. Um, but so the first one is a Spirit Scream attack. So put damage counters on both active Pokemon until the remaining HP of each is ten. So basically, you're putting them both at the uh, edge of the cliff. And uh, to push it over, well, you got a couple of things here. You've got uh, Shrine of Punishment. If it's an ERX or GX, it'll be knocked out right then uh, on that turn. You've got Poison Barb. If, you're po if your opponent attacks you with Poison Barb and they have one hit counter or they previously attacked you or attacked one of your Pokemon and they're poisoned, uh, this knocks them out. So um, I think I'd use this previously with like Spinarak and some other stuff. But So that uh, this has kind of been there before. I mean, obviously adding... Um, Poison Barb and um, Shrine of Punishment is new, um, but there's a second focal point in this deck as well, and that would be um, using. Well, I guess I guess the real focal point, of course, is uh, putting with Honkrow, uh, Honkrow's Raven Claw attack, which is 10 damage for each damage on all of your opponent's Pokemon. Now, you can get that with the Gorgai Spirit Scream if your opponent retreated. Uh, or you decide to use a Guzma or a counter catcher, so you can have one near death, play counter catcher Guzma, and put it either knock the other one out or have that near uh, death as well. Or uh, you can use, of course, Shrine of Punishment to get a lot of damage on the board if your opponent has a lot of EXGX, Poison Barb, or Gorgeis's first attack, Eerie Voice, which is put two damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. So I kind of find with this deck. Both attacks work really well. Sometimes if I don't have enough energy or I haven't, you know, I just got a Pokemon knocked out. I'm still, you know, playing behind on energy. Playing Eerie Voice a couple of times. Well, now uh, Honkro is going to become a, a beast when he comes in and do lots of damage. So um, obviously this deck plays a lot better against EX GX Pokemon. Luckily, uh, there is no shortage of that in Expanded. But uh, it does fare well against other types as well. I've played it against a few non-EX GX decks. And because of this combo of uh, eerie voice and uh and and raven's claw it, it does well uh and even with the poison barb uh you do get enough enough damage in you can exchange as i said before do some spirit scream exchange with counter catcher guzma and uh you still have that damage there so um it's a good deck it's a fun deck to play actually and uh i, I, don't, I mean if you look at this deck there's really not much to it um, if you're a standard player now, I think you have most of these cards, and what, what you don't have, you can sub out. Orangaroo is still standard. Uh, this one here, Startling Megaphone, you can change with whatever tool removal you want. Uh, you probably have a Sycamore and an end. If not, you can change this up. This is not uh, tied into the uh, to the main element, so I, I can't imagine the score guys uh, being all that expensive. So you should probably be able to pick up a 4-4, and you have all the rest, and there you go. Now you're playing in Expanded. How cool is that? So, uh, let's get to game numero uno. By the way, what happened to Gorga? There were two good Gorgais, uh cards in that era, that XY era. 
that uh, I'm very sad is not. Uh, so you could, I, I, and I played with both. I actually like both. Uh, let me say yes. Um, actually, of the physical decks I have, I have the other Gore guys as a deck. So, uh, physical deck. So anytime someone comes over, a, a couple of my kids' friends come over and want to play. So I was like, all right, sure. <laughs> Here you go. So that was a cool card too. It, uh, with one green energy, it had an ability with one green energy. Uh, it gained like 100 hit points or something like that, which was awesome. It made it tough to bring down. And you could always put like a rainbow on it or something like that. It was kind of fun. But it was one of those, uh, you attack to the size of your hand. So uh, as N became more popular or came back, I guess, into the rotation, that deck <laughs> fell out. <laughs> Ooh, so we're looking at... Uh, <laughs> We're looking at item. Uh, ooh, boy, this is gonna be tough. So let's uh, let's chuck some items. Uh, we're gonna be item locked and ability locked. I don't think ability locked matters all that much. Um, no. Let's let's stay with the. Ooh, no. Let's. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna stay with the pumpkin booze now because. The good thing is that Toad doesn't do a lot of damage, so I did like this deck. I do like, uh, I'm, I'm sure if you know my older decks, you know how much I like item lock. This is a poor hand here, unfortunately. Let's get this energy on him. So now I'm a little bit behind with regards to uh, energy. Well, we have a damage on uh, side of Toad, hopefully. He doesn't have anything to get the Shrine of Punishment. I don't have much as far as tool removal, so I may have to use Guzma to knock out this guy. But it's going to be hard because again, that other damage on it. But I have the ability. So I'm going to be item locked after this turn. Uh, with Quaking Hammer. Quaking Punch, excuse me. So if you're not familiar, this was a big card. Uh, your opponent can play item cards from his or her hand during his or her next turn. So that is part of item lock. And there's going to be ability lock coming up, so. Oh boy. So item lock and what? And banet and more. If you're going to item lock me, how are you going to get him out of my hand? I'm not sure how three of these fit in, but the banet's interesting when that comes out. Of course, I have my Shrine of Punishment, so I'm going to keep, uh, even though I would love to play the Sycamore, I want to keep the Stadium because I think we're going to see a bunch of GX cards here. So already we've got, you know, 30 damage on the board. Oh, that's good. Oh, I can't play it. It's an item card. Woe is me. So I'm, I'm prepping here for Eerie Voice and... Uh, I mean, if he's going to item lock me, it's going to take a few turns before this core guy is dead. Uh, he'll probably get, a, I'm guessing, a choice band or something on it. Now, I have no energy. This is very unlike this deck. This deck, usually, I'm flowing with energy. But none here right now. All right, so there we go. It's 50. If he doesn't get rid of that, it'll be 70 when it gets back to me. Trasher Lanch. Let's see how that works. Alright, he's going to be transferring damage back. Which will be interesting, but Shrine of Punishment is going to him out. Alright, still locking me out here from items. A Guzma would be nice. Uh, let's play Cynthia and not give my opponent any cards. This is interesting. It, you know, it's fun. You know, I, I, I don't play a... Uh, oof, jeez. This is just such bad hands. And I'm dead drawed here too, so good thing is once my opponent <laughs> knocks out this gore, uh, gore Geist, I can use counter uh, energy on this one and put a bunch of damage on him. Choice band, alright. It's great. Yeah, play all you want. All right, so he's going for item lock and ability lock. <laughs> I almost wanted to knock out my Gorgeist. 
<laughs> uh, that would be great. Can't you find a muscle band? Another trash lanch. They could have put the double DCE on him and knocked him out, I guess. Retreated. There's nothing to. I can't even play anything. Oh, I forgot what it's like to be on the item lock. It's been so long. Very sad they took that away. Now, if my opponent's smart, he won't knock me out now because if he does, he's going to get a whooping from either Honkro or Gorgais, my bench one. So, curious what his plan is. Put. <laughs> I mean, the funny thing is, he could, if even if he gets Bannet down, uh, he's not going to be able to remove the energy as fast as it comes down, so. And there's a fair amount on the table here. So, yeah, obviously my opponent thinking, th think, thinking things through. And whoever he puts up, I can knock out with the Honkro. So I'd like to see an EXGX here. Hmm, Chuck Lysander. All right, there we go. Ability lock, too. I mean, if you didn't have that, obviously, playing a Rangaroo and emptying my hand would be great. Although, playing too many item cards is going to really work against me here. Yep, there we go. All right, so I'm going to knock him out. The question is, do I want to do it with Gorgeist? Mm, yes, because I will get a knockout with him and then another one with him. So I'm going to be winning in a second. Even after all this. But I'm going to have trouble knocking out these guys as they come attack. But they're not... My Gorgeist is not weak to them. Although, <laughs> that's going to make me... So it would have been nice to get a counter catch or a Guzma in my hand. Uh, I could play Starling, Megaphone, and Orangaroo, but I mean, might be worth it. I don't know. You notice, you know, I don't have any computer cert. I don't have any of the fancy cards, no trainers or anything in here. Um, you could put all that in this deck. I uh, wonder what he took. Lysander, maybe? Oh, there you go. And there that guy goes. But I think I have enough damage on the board, or I will, to get rid of whoever comes up next. I mean, 80, uh, 110. Well, maybe not, but... Well, he can't play Lysander now. Or Guzma. And, although, I can't attack with this guy. In fact, this turns into a single energy. So I almost want him to be knocked out. This fuzz roll would be dead because again I'm gonna get 20 more energy as well. So I'm not scared of him. I'm scared of not having anything to play. I mean, could let's see. Oof. So I have a couple decisions here. Do I want to play a bunch of item cards or Sycamore and lose a bunch of item cards? Four and six. it's 120. He's gonna be knocking out everything. So I think I don't. And I think even if I keep it to 60 and use this guy, oh, but I can't. Rangaroo doesn't help. All right, so there's no point in doing anything. I think maybe putting a poison barb on him. Yeah, let's do that. So my next attack will be. Oh, 140. Oh, the item lock. <laughs> I'm under double item lock. I mean, I don't want these Garbodors to become beasts, but I may do it next turn. I don't know. So now I'm starting to lean towards it because where are my options here? 
I don't have another attacker, so. Yeah, I'm kind of. Uh, Yeah, I think next turn. Unless, I mean, you know, I could get a Cynthia or something like that, and then wouldn't help unless I played Startling Megaphone first. But yeah, my opponent doesn't really have much to attack with. I mean, Bannet. What's the max on Bannet? A 130. But, I mean, he's going to be close to knocked out. Did my opponent decide that he had enough? I think that's what I'm looking at here. Uh, we could have a. Let's see, let's see, yeah. That's my guess. Let's see if my opponent quit. Either that or he just did not want to choose which Pokemon. But that, I mean, this would be the worst Pokemon to pick, right? Because you would pick the guy with the Floatstone or even Banat has going to do the most damage. Uh, this Garbodor is not going to do any. I think my opponent uh, walked away. <laughs> oh boy. Well, let's think. What should I do? Well, obviously the, the thing I'm going to do next, attack with the Honkro, place the energy, and I don't really need to do anything, so maybe he just uh, had something cooking on the stove or, you know, kids did something, had to yell at them or something. I mean, the cool thing about Expanded, although you see a lot of older stuff, but sometimes you'll see decks, like this would be a pretty much a, you know, maybe a month ago this was a common deck here. Alright, let's just play this. And But the cool thing is you do see more stuff in Expanded, so you can't really plan for the meta. So you know what the meta is in Standard, you know what you're going to face, what decks you're going to face, what their weaknesses are, whatever. But in Expanded, you might face anything, and uh... You have to be prepared for everything, and I think I think that's more my strength. I don't like planning for okay. Here are the five, ten decks that are out there, and here are the things I have to. I'm always, you know, I'm always impressed with people that do that. A tech in one or two cards, because it seems like when I do that, like they just never work. <laughs> I never get them at the right time, or they're like my active Pokemon out of my hand when I when I first draw. So, um, I don't like doing that that often. Uh, depends. Uh, I guess on some decks you have some weaknesses, but I, I guess I try to build the whole deck, you know, that way. So who knows? Maybe I'll have some more from Expanded here. All right, that's definitely the worst Pokemon. Obviously, the computer's just picking it. There you go. All right, so that's not a big surprise. All right, so uh, I guess my opponent rage quit or whatever. I had to had had to run to the bathroom. I don't know what it was, but uh, yeah, obviously, as you could see, this deck, you know, even though, so my opponent, um, you know, he did have some EX cards or whatever, but uh, even without them, it's played pretty well. I was able to deal, once I, the damage starts going down, a lot of times people are going to have Shaman or Lele, you know, obviously to draw cards or whatever, so they're always going to be down there. There's going to be some damage down there. It's usually pretty easy to get a single energy. I'm surprised I didn't get any energy. That was pretty surprising. Maybe that was in part due to item lock, maybe because I have a lot of item cards in this deck, or at least enough um, that I wasn't playing them, you know, Poison Barb and what that, so I couldn't get a Rangaroo to draw a few extra cards here and there, but I'm really surprised. Like, usually I have more trouble getting these than these. These are like I get it all the time, so sometimes I'll, I'll power up the Honkro with two of these or whatever, but yeah, I, I we didn't even see the eerie voice. The cool thing is I played a match against Heracross, the one that... Uh, Flip a coin and it doesn't go to you know doesn't die doesn't get prized and uh, this put two damage counters on it uh, is not affected because you're not dealing damage you're placing uh, counters so it's pretty cool I kept I kept running this against my opponent and uh, it was actually a pretty good match I don't remember if I won or not it came it came down to to the wire I think I did but uh, yeah there's a lot of fun games you get with this deck there's a lot more fun games you get in expanded. Uh, you see, if you're bored of seeing the same 10 decks over and over again, you know, you should definitely try it. And here's a nice cheap deck for Expanded for you. So uh, hopefully you try it out, and uh, I hope it was this was worth the wait. And thanks for watching, and until next time.